Hello everyone, Game Dog here, and welcome to a big compilation video of all the attack, magic, friend, and enemy cards, as well as all of the slights in the game. Let's start this. First are the attack cards and the attack slights. These are your primary attack for the game, as well as slights that mostly use attack cards. In order, they are Kingdom Key, Three Wishes, Crab Claw, Pumpkin Head, Fairy Harp, Wishing Star, Spellbinder, Metal Chocobo, Olympia, Lionheart, Lady Luck, Divine Rose, Oathkeeper, Oblivion, Diamond Dust, One Winged Angel, and Ultima Weapon. And not to forget Riku's exclusive attack, the Soul Eater. Now to show off some slights that utilize mostly attack cards. First up is Sliding Dash, which requires three cards of the same type with value between 10 and 15. You slide forward hitting all enemies in a row. It's pretty useful early game, actually. Next up is Stun Impact. You, need, you activate this by using three attack cards of the same type with a value between 20 and 23. You stun all enemies around you, giving you a very a large amount of time to actually counterattack them. Pretty useful. Next is Blitz, which require any three attack cards with a value between, uh, between 24 and 26. You hurl your keyblade forward like a boomerang, stunning all enemies in its path. And as per usual, it can hit um it can hit on the way to its uh, to its peak and away from it. Next up is Blitz, which requires any three different attack cards with a total value between uh, 10 and 15, I believe. You shoot forward three times, hitting an enemy each. I believe it has a little bit of splash damage too, so it can be quite useful for uh, for hitting multiple enemies at once. Next up is Sonic Blade. Those of you who watched my playthrough know that this is probably my favorite slight in the game. It requires three attack cards of different types with a total value between 20 and 23. By pressing the A button in between each attack, you can rock it back and forth, pretty much uh, making it so you can use a sliding dash like five or six times in a row. Very effective. Next is Xanta Sukin, which requires any three attack cards of a value of either 0 or 27. Is a powerful single hitting strike that can actually put a single boss's card out of commission permanently. Next is Ars Arcanum, which requires any three attack cards of a totally value between uh, between one and six. You start rocking it forward and deal a number of, of, of single strikes, which deal a lot of damage. Next is Ragnarok, which requires any three attack cards of a totally value between seven and nine. It's an attack of a big charger, but it does very heavy damage to whatever those little pedals hit. Next is Trinity Limit, which requires one attack card, one Donald card, and one Goofy card. It deals very heavy damage to all enemies on screen. If those shadows weren't underground, it would probably one-shot those guys as well. Next are Riku's attack slights. Now it's worth knowing that you must be in dark mode in order to execute all three of these. The first is Dark Break, which requires three um, Soul Eater cards of a value between 5 and 15. You'll jump into the air and then repeatedly come crashing down on various enemies. Next is Dark Faraga, which requires three Soul Eater cards of a total value between 16 and 25. You'll throw a Fireball Thor that does a really good amount of damage. And finally is Dark Aura, which acquires three Soul Leader cards of a value of 27. Now this one is just impressive. He does this in like every game too. You just go back and forth slashing opponents and then you deal one big finisher attack at the very end. Oh, it can confuse enemies as well, I didn't know that. Next are the Magic cards and Magic Slights. These also include your summons. First is Fire. Should a small fireball forward that deals fire damage to enemies. Next is Fyra. Should a medium sized fireball forward which does a moderate amount of damage to enemies. Oh. And finally is Faraga. Should a huge fireball forward that deals a massive amount of damage to enemies. Now for the blizzard spells. Blizzard. That little snowflake is actually a hitbox. It deals a damage to anything touching it. 
Same for its upgraded version, Blizzara. The damage is not nearly as concentrate concentrate as it is it as it is with Fyra, but um it can do a damage to a lot of enemies at once. Lazaga is honestly one of my favorite spells in the game, too. That whole crystal is a hitbox, and it deals very heavy damage to anything touching it. Thunder deals damage to any enemy it's targeted upon. Thundara, on the other hand, is a massive group hit that hits the entire screen for a very small amount of damage. Fully upgrade to get access to Thundaga which hits all enemies for a very decent amount of damage. Next is Cure. You basically just heal a small amount of health to yourself. Upgrade, it becomes Cura. Which, heal, deals, which heals a moderate amount of damage to yourself. I hope it doesn't deal a mod amount of damage to yourself, but it certainly heals it. Next is Curaga, which as far as I'm concerned is basically a full heal. And now for the gravity based attacks. Gravity deals percentage-based damage to your opponent. That damage would have been the same percentage-wise, no matter what I hit. Gravira hits more enemies, and I think it deals more damage as well. Graviga hits a huge amount of area, and deals a very decent amount of damage as well. Something to note about uh, gravity is that it will never actually kill a monster because it does percentage-based damage. Next is Stop. You halt a single enemy's movement for a little, uh, for a small period of time. Stop Ra halts it for a little bit longer, and it can hit multiple enemies. Stop Gub hits a huge amount of area and stops them for even longer. Then finally is Aerio. You create a giant whirlwind around yourself that deals a decent amount of damage to enemies. Upgrade to Aurora, or Aerio, and uh, the whirlwind gets bigger and it does yet more damage. When fully upgraded, it becomes Aroga, deals even more damage and hits an even wider spread. Uh, it hits an even wider spread. Now we're going to talk about summons. First up is Simba. He spawns in front of him and roars at everything in front of him, which deals a small amount of damage. When powered up, he gains the ability to stun enemies, which is really cool. When you stockpile three of them, he gets even more range, basically gaining the ability to um to 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 cover the entire field. And he still uh, and he still stuns, which is cool. Next is Genie. When you summon him. He'll cast either Thundara, um, Gravira, or Stopra on any enemy, enemy in front of him. When you level him up, he'll do two castings of either of those spells. Level him up further, and he'll do three castings. Very neat. Next is Bambi. Unfortunately, he's not as overpowered as he was in the original Kingdom Hearts. When you summon him, he starts hopping around and dropping uh, health orbs for you to pick up. Level him up, and uh, he drops even more of them. He drops the big ones this time, though. Level him up even further... And I believe his hops can also stun enemies. Yeah, like that. Very nice. Next is Dumbo. When you summon him, he sprays everything in front of him of water. That deals ice damage. It's kind of hard to tell, though. Level him up, his uh, his water will go even farther. Oh, I don't need to do that. I got high ethers. I'll explain what those do later. Level him up even farther, or further... And his water can basically hit the entire screen. Next is Tinkerbell. When you summon her, she flies around you, gradually restoring your health. Stockpile 2, and she stays for longer. Stockpile 3 of them, and she stays for even longer. 
I personally find this one a bit unwieldy, if only because um, I might as well just use Cure and I get the heal off right away, as opposed to something that lingers that can easily be zeroed. It's still kind of neat, though. Next is Mushu. When you summon him, he spawns on top of Sora's head and starts uh, shooting fireballs at opponents, dealing fire damage. Level him up, and he, and he gets access to Flare Breath, in which he fires even more shots of fire. Well, you level him up, and uh, he'll shoot even more shots of fire. <laughs> this one's kind of cool. It saves a while, though, so it's not, it's not really the most wieldy thing in the world, but it's still kind of fun. Next is what a lot of people actually consider to be the best summon in this game, and I kind of agree. It's Cloud. When you summon him, he does two slashes to whatever enemies are in front of him. He does pretty heavy damage, too. Level up! Oop, and you get Cross Slash, in which he hits three times. Level him up further, and he gets access to Omni Slash, in which he starts flying around and then swooping down to hit enemies with his sword. He does this three times. Next are the Raid abilities, which are some of my favorite in the game. First is Fire Raid, which requires fire and any two attack cards. Then Blizzard Raid, which requires Blizzard and any two attack cards. Thunder Raid, which requires Thunder and any two attack cards. Gravity Raid, which requires Gravity and any two attack cards. Stop Raid, which requires Stop and any two attack cards. The various mysteriously named Judgment, which requires uh, Aerial and any two attack cards. I like that one a lot. And then finally, Reflect Raid, which requires Cloud and any two attack cards. Next is Homing Fyra which requires Aerial, Fire, and any magic card. It's pretty much fire that homes in. Then you get Homing Blizzara, which is pretty much the same thing, but it requires a Blizzard as opposed to a Fire. Next is Faraga Break, which requires Fire, Mushu, and any attack card. Oh. I don't know how I hit that one, but the next one is Bind, which requires uh, Gravity, Stop, and any Magic card. It holds enemy in enemies in place. Well, it holds all ground enemies in place. At which point they can't move. They can still attack, which is kind of interesting, but um, yeah, pretty much any grounded enemy can't move for a little while. Next is Confuse, which requires Genie, Tinkerbell, and any summon card. You confuse all enemies on screen, so they all attack you less often. Next is Terror, which requires Simba, Mushu, and any item card. You frighten every enemy on screen, which will then run away from you, not attacking you for a short period of time. If you are in Halloween Town, you can also activate this by using any two summon cards followed by Jack. How does it work on the creeper plants? Oh, they just stay in place. That's interesting, though. I like that. Next is Teleport, which requires Stop, Aereo, and any item card. You will warp behind an enemy and cast Stop on them. It's kind of underwhelming. Kind of useful, though. If you are in Neverland, you can also activate this by using any two magic cards followed by Peter Pan. The next one is a little technical. It's Synchro, which requires Cure, Gravity, and Aerial. Now, notice how one of these defenders' uh, health is full, and one of these is missing a little bit of life. I'm going to cast it on the one missing a little bit of life. All monsters on screen's health becomes the health of, uh, of whatever you casted it on. Now, they're both missing a little bit of life. Next is Gifted Miracle, which requires Bambi, Blizzard, and any item card. It restores health to yourself as well as enemies and reloads all your cards. If you are in Halloween Town, you can also activate this by using any summon card, any magic card, as well as Jack. Next is Idle Romp, or perhaps It'll Romp. It requires Bambi and any two attack cards. 
Enemy will be summoned and start bouncing on enemies, confusing them, making them so they'll attack less often. Next is Warpinator, which requires Stop, Gravity, and Aereo. It instantly kills a monster. It doesn't always work, though. Next is the much more basically named Warp, which requires Stop, Aereo, and Aereo. It has a chance to instantly kill all monsters. Now, they don't drop experience whenever you use Warp or Warp and Aero on a monster, however, enemies still drop cards after you defeat them, meaning they can be a very useful way to grind for enemy cards. Next is Aqua Splash, which requires Blizzard, Fire, and Aereo. You shoot water out of your keyplate, similar to how Dumbo attacks. Next is Quake, which requires Gravity, Simba, and any magic card. It deals a good amount of damage to all grounded enemies. It will not work on flying ones, though. Next is Holy, which requires a High Aether, a Mega Elixir, and any item card. You erect a giant beam of light that deals very heavy damage to anything it touches. Next is Mega Flare, which I'm going to use underwater because that's how I am. It requires Mushu and two fire cards. You show a giant fireball that, if connects, causes a huge explosion that deals very heavy damage to all enemies. And now for the item cards. These things are usually very expensive, but have the really cool effect of instantly reloading your deck. Now for these demonstrations, I'm going to be using these six cards. The first three are attack cards, which I'm going to use in a slight like that, and the second three are attack cards, which I'm going to use in a slight like this. This is important because some of these affect uh, whether or not the cards were used in slights or not. The first is the potion card, which automatically reloads the, the um, all, available, all available cards. Notice how it only reload the second two, though, and not the one I used in the slight. The next is the High Potion card, which reloads all of your attack cards, including the ones you used in the slight. Notice that my reload counter is at 3 right now. This is important, because the next uh, potion, the Mega Potion, on top of doing basically what the High Potion does, also reloads, uh, resets your reload counter back to 1. Next is the Aether which reloads all your reloadable magic cards. Next is the High Aether, which reloads all of your magic cards and resets your reload counter. That was a 2 beforehand. Oddly enough, there's no Mega Aether, so the High Aether just basically does what that does. Next is the Elixir, which reloads all of your cards. And then finally is the Mega Elixir, which reloads all of your cards and resets your reload counter. Next are the Friend Cards and Friend Slights. Now, while recording this one, I noticed that more friend cards tend to appear in battle the more hits you dish out, so keep that in mind if you plan on relying on these. First is Donald. You summon him, and he'll cast either Fire, Blizzard, Thunder, or Cure twice. Next is Magic Level 2, which requires two Donald cards. He'll spawn out of nowhere and, and uh, use either Fyra, Blizzara, um, Thundara, or Cura twice. Next is Magic Level 3, which requires 3 Donald cards. He'll jump in and, and cast 2 castings of either um, Faraga, Blizzaga, Thundaga, or Kiraga. Ooh, enemy card too, that's nice. Next is Blazing Donald, which requires 1 Fire, 1 Donald, and 1 Fire. Now this one's just silly. <laughs> Next is Goofy. When you summon him, he'll jump in and charge forward with a shield, scattering enemies. Next is Goofy Charge, which requires two Goofy cards. It's pretty much identical, however it can also stun enemies now. Next is Goofy Tornado, which requires three Goofy cards. Now I really like this one. Goofy summons and starts spinning around you, doing very heavy damage to all enemies he runs into. Next is Aladdin. Uh, I'm going to stock him with something else to make him a bit more powerful, but what he does is he spawns in and then he starts slashing around with his scimitar. Next is Sandstorm level 2. Aladdin will jump in and then run around slashing with his scimitar for longer. Next is Sandstorm level 3. Aladdin will spawn in and then start rushing around with his scimitar, hitting for... A very long period of time, actually. Yeah, he stays for quite a while during this one. 
Next is Jack. Jack acts a little very similar to Donald, actually. When you summon him, he'll cast either Fire, Blizzard, Thunder, or Gravity. Next is Surprise Level 2, which requires two Jack cards. Eh, I'll power that up. He'll jump in and double cast either Fyra, Blizzara, Thundar, or Gravira. Next is Surprise Level 3. It requires three Jack cards. He'll spawn in and triple cast either uh, Faraga, Blizzaga, Thundaga, or Gravaga. Next is Ariel. Eh, let's power that up too. She'll fly across the screen hitting all enemies she, uh, she runs into. Next is Spyro Wave Level 2, which requires two Ariel cards, and again, let's power that up. She'll fly back and forth a few times, once again hitting all enemies she hits. Next is Spyro Wave Level 3, which requires three Ariel cards. She'll rush back and forth several times hitting all enemies she hits. Next is Peter Pan, who I'll go ahead and power up. He spawns in and starts flying around, stabbing enemies with his knife. Next is Hummingbird Level 2, which requires two Peter Pan cards. He'll basically fly around for even longer. Nothing too special here. Next is Hummingbird Level 3, which requires three Peter Pan cards. He'll fly around for even longer, once again hitting all enemies he hits. Next is Beast, who I'll go ahead and power up. He rushes through, dealing damage to all enemies he hits. Next is Beast Level 2, who I will power up. He rushes through, scattering all enemies he hits. And finally is Ferocious Lunge Level 3. The Beast will jump in, crushing any enemy he lands on, as well as doing a very good amount of damage. Next is Riku's exclusive friend card. Mickey. When you summon him, you'll damage all enemies, send them flying, stun them, heal you, and reload all your cards. This is a really good one. Next is Mickey Mouse Miracle Level 2, which requires two Mickey cards. On top of doing all those ridiculous effects, he will heal you for even more and deal even more damage. Next is Mickey Mouse Miracle Level 3, which requires three Mickey cards. It's pretty much identical, although it'll do more damage and heal you for more. And finally are the enemy cards. These are the cards that give you temporary passive effects. First is the shadow card. Now notice I, how I have a bunch of six cards here. What shadow does is he gives you incremator, increasing the value of each and every one of those by one. One thing worth being careful about is that it also works for your zero cards, so your previously useful zeros are now going to be ones. Next is the Soldier card. Now notice how Sora's normal combo is usually 3 hits big. With the Soldier out, it's now going to be 4 hits big because it gives you combo plus. Next is the Large Body. He gives you Guard, which basically negates all damage you take if the opponent is hitting you from the front. It only works for frontal attacks though. Still very useful. Next is the Red Nocturne, which gives you Fire Boost. Increases the damage of all of your fire-based attacks. Next is Blue Rhapsody, which gives you Blizzard Boost, boosting the damage of all your Blizzard-based attacks. After that is Yellow Requiem, which gives you Thunder Boost, boosting the damage of all your Thunder-based attacks. And then finally is the Green Re Requiem, which gives you Cure Boost, boosting the, the, um, the potency of your Cure spells. Next is the Power Wild. Now notice how my card virus are 9, 8, 7, 6, and so on. What the Power Wild does is he reverses that. He gives you Retrograde. So now it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it keeps going up. Zero stay the same. Next is the Bouncy Wild, which gives you Draw. Now I'm going to kill a monster from way over here. Notice how I pick up the crystals from farther away than I normally would. That's what Draw does. He 
can pick him up away from just about anywhere on the screen, too, which is really cool. Goes away after the battle, though. Like you knew at that point. Next is the Air Soldier, which gives you Reload Kinesis. It basically makes it so you can uh, you can reload while in motion, something you can't normally do. This one is pretty useful for more hectic battles. Next is the Bandit card. Now normally your combo goes 1-2 and then a big third hit. The Bandit card you get combo finish, which pretty much makes every single one of your attacks the big hit. It also works in the air. A little hard to aim though, I like it. Next is the Fat Bandit. Now notice how much damage I do when I hit that monster from behind. What the Fat Bandit does is he gives you back attack, which increases damage dealt to enemies when attacking them from behind. Very useful. Now you know when you reload your cards? You have this little animation which shuffles through your deck. If that is perhaps too long for you, you might be interested in uh, the Barrel Spider card, which gives you quick load. It makes it so that little animation does not happen and your deck is instantly reloaded. Very useful if you have a big deck. Next is the Search Ghost card, which gives you Drain. It makes it so as you hit or hurt enemies, you regain a little bit of life. I believe it only works in your normal attacks though, it's still very useful. Next is the C Neon, which gives you random values. It's as hectic as it sounds, who knows if this will work out in your favor. Next is the Screw Diver, which gives you Decrometer. It, increase, it decreases the value of all of your cards by 1. The best useful I found for this is turning all your 1 cards into zeros. Next is the Aqua Tank, which gives you Auto Reload. It makes it so the second you run out of cards, it'll instantly reload you. Next is the White Knight, which gives you Float. It increases your jump height. Frankly, I haven't really found that many practical uses for this one. Next is the Gargoyle, which gives you Vanish. It makes you invincible. Well, it makes you invisible. You're flashing on screen, but you can't really tell. Oh, there we go. But, um, it pretty much makes so enemies are less likely to hurt you now, since they can't really see you. Yeah, as you can see, they're kind of attacking aimlessly. Pretty nice. Next is the pirate card, which gives you all zeros. Oh. With proper timing, this one is actually pretty good. Next is the air pirate, which gives you, uh, item bracer. It makes it so enemies cannot break your item cards. This one's pretty good. Next is the Dark Ball, which gives you card blind. It makes it so your opponent cannot see which cards you are stocking up. Now you might be wondering how why this is useful. It's not really useful at all in the single player. Where this really shines is the multiplayer, where your opponent will not be able to see what kind of uh, what kind of slight you're stocking up. Next is the Defender card, which gives you Protect. It has all damage you take from physical attacks. Next is the Wyvern card, which gives you Reload Lock. Now, when you reload your cards, it usually increments by 1. Now with Reload Lock, that's going to stay as a 1. Next is the Wizard card. It gives you magic boost, which negates the use of summon cards, but in return powers up your magic. Next is one of my personal favorites, the Neo Shadow card, which gives you bio. It gradually drops the health of all of your opponents. It can never flat out kill them though, so you will have to deal the finishing blow. It's still kind of neat to have some gradual damage going though. Next is the White Mushroom card. It gives you Hyper Healing, which heals you whenever you use a friend card. Next is the Black Fungus, which pretty much mimics any card in the game. Hey, this one gave me Thunder Boost. The roulette stops when you hit the A button. Next is one of my personal favorite abilities in the series. It's the Creeper Plant card, which gives you Leaf Bracer. It makes it so enemies cannot break your Cure cards. Next is the Tornado Step. It gives you Reload Haste, 
That's what you'd expect. It speeds up the uh, rate at which, uh, which the reload counter goes down. I think it also makes it, yeah, it also makes it so it doesn't increment for a couple uh, turns either, which is pretty cool. Next is the Crescendo, which gives you Summon Boost. It negates the use of your magic cards, however, powers up your summon cards. Next is the Guard Armor, which gives you Wide Attack. It increases the range of your attacks. Next is the Card Soldier, which increases the swing speed of your attacks. It gives you Attack Haste. Next is Trick Master, which is one of my personal favorites. It gives you value break. Now I'm going to play a few cards. Now whenever my opponent breaks my own cards, what's going to happen is that his cards devalue. Very nifty. And it's very good for long battles like this too. Next is Parasite Cage. Notice how he has an enemy card set up? This negates it. Next is Dark Side. Notice how Handsome has an enemy card out? This copies it. Now I have Slight Blind. Next is Hades, who gives you Berserk. It increases the damage of your attacks if you are at low health. Next is Jafar, who gives you Attack Bracer. It makes it so enemies cannot break your attack cards. A very useful uh, use for this that a lot of people have found is to combine this with very low, uh, low attack slights. Like, for example, Ragnarok, or, uh, or this one. Next is one of my personal favorites, the Oogie Boogie card. It gives you regen, which gradually restores your health. I personally find this one crucial as Riku as well, because um, he really doesn't get that many uh, ways of healing. Next is the Ursula card, which gives you shell. It halves damage you take from magical attacks. Next is the Captain Hook card. It gives you second chance. This makes it so when an attack normally would kill you, you'll retain one health instead. Unless you have one health, otherwise it would kill you. Next is the Dragon Maleficent card which gives you Overdrive. It decreases your reload speed, however in return, it increases the damage you deal. Next is the Riku card, which gives you Slight Lock. Now I'm gonna use this, uh, I'm gonna use this Slight right here. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, because that would take forever, but um... Now normally when you use a Slight, the first card goes away forever. When you have Slight Lock out though, it'll remain. So you can do the slight again if you want. Next is the Axel card, which gives you quick recovery. It makes it so even when you're staggering from damage, you can attack very quickly. Next is the Larkseen card, which gives you dash. It increases your run speed. Next is the Vexen card, which gives you auto life. Now say you were to die. Auto life will revive you with a little bit of health. Next is the Marluxia card, which gives you double slight. Makes it so you use a slight, and then you use it again, automatically. I like this one a lot. Next is the Lexius card, which gives you Warp Break. It makes it so the final hit of your combo has a chance to instantly kill an enemy. It works a lot more often than you, th than you think it would. And then finally is Ansem, who gives you Slight Blind. It's a little bit like the Dark Ball, however Slight Blind makes it so your opponent can't tell you're stalking cards at all. And kind of like with the Dark Ball, it is only good in multiplayer. 
Thanks for watching.